Welcome to another edition of E.W. Jackson for America. Great to be with you again today. I've got some exciting news this morning. Okay. As of yesterday, uh, we released our first effort under the Save America elect Donald Trump project and it's called Exodus Now the sequel. Now, let me just say to you <clears throat> what this is and tell you how to access it. I wish I had the wherewithal and eventually I will to be able to show it to you on this program. Just haven't gotten uh, there yet. Um, uh, that's beyond my technical expertise. I need help to do it. And, and I've been busy with a bunch of other things so that I'm not going to be able to do that. However, it's called Exodus Now the sequel. And what it is, is uh, an extension of the argument that I made. Well, let me back up because some of you may not be aware of this. <clears throat> a decade ago, I did a video called Exodus Now. And that video is over a decade ago now because I think I released that video in 2010, actually. I think it was 2010. And that video went viral. Now, that was before. So that was, wow, that was 14 years ago. So that was before the uh, big tech social media types had figured out how to suppress things that they don't want people to hear or maybe how they figured out that they need to suppress things that people don't want to hear. And so a lot of stuff, as you probably remember, things just went viral, boom, just exploded on the scene. And that was a video that went viral According to our records, what we can document, about 2 million people saw it, but I think probably some multiple of that saw it. And the reason I say that is that I don't have any way of knowing how many people who, of the 2 million people we document, how many people shared it with other people. What I do know is that as I traveled the country during that time, everywhere I went, people had seen it. Everywhere I went. In fact, uh, I didn't know this, but Pastor Gary Hambrick, who's a dear friend of mine, and I preached for him uh, just last month, told me that was when he first learned about me. That was when he first became aware of me because of that video. <laughs> he thought, who is this guy, you know, who is saying these things that so desperately need to be said, but nobody else seems to be willing to say them. Well, okay, I was that guy. Um, I was just doing what the Lord had put on my heart to do. And I called it Exodus Now. Well, that video, which was seen by millions, is that's not exa an exaggeration. It was seen by millions. That video has now got a sequel called Exodus Now, the sequel. Now, let me just say this to you right off the bat. Having this video go viral is not going to be easy. Because they're going to do everything they can, they meaning all the leftists who are in big tech, you know, the leftists who told me that they can't monetize my YouTube channel because the content is harmful, um, which is just, I mean, just utterly preposterous. What they mean is we're a bunch of flaming leftists, homosexuals, pedophiles, gender confused people. Um, you know, we, we're godless, we're amoral, and we don't want anybody with a biblical worldview expressing to us ideas that violate and contradict and convict us of our own sick, perverse lifestyles and ways of thinking and speaking. That's really what they mean. It's harmful. What they mean is we don't like it. It convicts us. It judges us. So at any rate, we know what we're up against, right? We know what we're up against. Um, if this were the same level of, shall we say, scrutiny as it, 15 years ago, 14 years ago, the thing would probably take off and just explode around the country. It could still do that, but it's going to require your help. So here's what I need you to do. Uh, if you go to our website, this is under the aegis of our PAC, StandAmericaPAC.us. Now, that's not StandAmerica.us. That's our nonprofit. 
And as you know, our nonprofit doesn't get into partisan politics. Our nonprofit doesn't talk about Democrats versus Republicans, one candidate versus another candidate, because we're 501c3 and we're under IRS regulations not to do so. So we stick strictly with the issues. Now, the issues may fall, obviously do fall, on the conservative side of the political spectrum, but that's not our fault. That's just the way people categorize things. What we are doing is giving a Judeo-Christian or biblical worldview and perspective on the issues of the day. And we have a perfect First Amendment right to do that. Uh, but we are prohibited from getting involved. The nonprofit is prohibited from getting involved in partisan politics and candidates. So the PAC is doing that. The PAC is called Stand America PAC. And the website is Stand America PAC. So Stand America with a P A C at the end, dot US. Stand America PAC dot US. If you go to the website, Right on the home page of the website now is Exodus Now, the sequel. And you'll see a button to, at the top. Well, first of all, watch it yourself. Now, it is a 10-minute video. Uh, and I know people say, well, that's, that's awfully long. But, folks, there's so much to be said. You know, you just can't do this in one minute. You can't. It's just not possible. So I know people have short attention spans today. And, you know, they say that people, you know, don't want to watch something longer than 20 seconds and all that stuff. Well, I can't, I can't help them. <laughs> you know, what can I say? You know, I preach a sermon that's almost an hour long every Sunday. So that's, you know, you can't. The Apostle Paul preached all day, all night. Somebody fell asleep in the window, fell out and died. He went down to raise him from the dead and went back up and kept preaching. So um, I, I haven't preached a sermon that long. <laughs> um <laughs> but first, I'd ask you to watch it and then share it with everybody you can. Now, let me clarify what I mean by share it with everybody you can. I don't mean just share it with the people that you know. And by all means, do that. If people on your Facebook list or you, if you're on Twitter, you've got a list or you're on Instagram, you've got whatever the Instagram deal is. I don't really... I still haven't fully grasped Instagram, but nevertheless, I use it. Uh, whatever, hi, Instagram audience. Um, by all means, share it with the people who are in your orbit, the people who are on your list, the people who are in your phone book, the people who, you know, the people who you know, family, friends, colleagues, um, social media friends. You'd probably get a few negative reactions if you've got friends on the other side of the political spectrum, but that's okay. Give you a great basis for some discussion. But what I mean is, go beyond that. I mean, so for example, this morning, I was sharing that video with some of these black rappers who have indicated that the Democrat Party is doing nothing for the black community. So I don't follow their music, I'm not their fans, but I had an article in my archives about some of them, and I went in, looked them up, looked them up on Twitter, and sent them my video. So I shared it with them. So I'm asking you to do something similar. You don't have to know Sean Hannity to share it with them. You don't have to know um, the folks over at Newsmax, and maybe somebody you watch, um, uh, what is it, uh, Chris Alceda, or, or um, you know, anybody, anybody over there, any of the personalities over there that you know, if you, 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 maybe you follow them, share it with your followers. Share it with the people you follow. Let's make this video go viral in spite of all the efforts that they're going to be to stop it from happening, okay? Let's make it go viral. And, and obviously, my office and my staff my staff, my office, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be doing everything we can to push it out there. Um, and we're still, still working on that. One step we haven't taken yet, which we're going to take, so you're going to be the first to hear about this. We, we are creating, a, a, again, out of this, a new project called the Exodus Movement. In fact, folks, may I just say, and I say this with no, no sense of, of pride or covetousness, but just as a factual matter, and you know, this is one of the things that bothers me. We don't connect the dots historically in our country. We don't, we don't build on our legacy. But, you know, before there was Blexit, everybody knows about Blexit because, uh, of course, Candace Owens, you know, hit the, the, the country by storm and got a lot of, 
you know, she was promoted by Prager University and then by uh, Turning Point USA and, and, you know, and, and all of that. And so, you know, she got very, very well known in, in conservative circles very, very quickly, uh, practically overnight. And she started this thing called Blexit, you know, which was calling black people and others out of the Democrat Party. But before there was Blexit, folks, there was the Exodus movement. There was Exodus Now. And, and Exodus Now was started by Bishop E.W. Jackson. So, and I'm not taking anything away from Blexit. Uh, this is different, though, uh, than Blexit, and I'll explain why in a second. But, you know, we ought to build on what we've got. And, and to, to her credit, by the way, I've spoken at Blexit. Candace Owens has had me on Blexit. We, she and I have never really talked about, about Exodus Now. She may or may not even know about it. But share with people like that. People, all, all these Blexit people, share it with them because my effort predates theirs. And by the way, I don't claim to be the only one who's ever made this call, uh, but I think I'm the first one who had a, a real viral response to the call that, that really made it kind of famous under the radar. Bill O'Reilly talked about it. He didn't have me on, he didn't have me on his I've been on, I, I was on Bill O'Reilly's program several times as his guest, but for the Exodus Now video, he did not have me on, but he talked about it on his program, and so did a number of others. So, um, help me to get it out there. Exodus Now, the sequel. So you can go to our website, standamericapact.us, and you can watch it, okay? Uh, so that's the first thing. Share it with everybody you know and share it with people you don't know as well. And then here's the second thing. Please make a contribution to the effort. Contributions to Stand America PAC are political contributions. They are not tax deductible. Uh, they are part of the public record. Uh, so just so you know what you're, what you're getting into there, you're not going to get a tax deduction for it. And, and, and people will know that you contributed. If you don't have a problem with those two things, uh, then please make a contribution. Uh, and I'm, I'm encouraging people to become, for the PAC, we call it Save America Partners, to become a Save America Partner with a monthly automatic donation um, every month. It'll end automatically after the election because when you have a PAC, you, you, run, you have to run the PAC according to election cycles and you sort of zero out or at least you, you cease activity uh, if you will, and my treasurer and attorneys understand this stuff better than I do, but, but after the election cycle is over, um, those commitments that you have end and they have to start all over again. In other words, if people still want to give, they have to end their, 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 their giving cycle uh, and then start all over again for the election because, you know, for, for, uh, this is technical stuff, but you get my point. But you'd be able to give, what is this, March, April, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, about, about nine months or so, right? Um, we should include eight months if you don't include November. Um, you could give eight months. If you gave five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, 25 bucks a month, 50 bucks a month, I mean, it, it helps. It helps. Uh, my, my, my goal is to spend a million dollars in five states. Uh, Pennsylvania, a million dollars in each of five states, so that's a total of $5 million. A million dollars in Pennsylvania, a million dollars in Virginia, a million dollars in North Carolina, a million dollars in Georgia, and a million dollars in Ohio. Now that may change depending upon the circumstances, but let's just be clear, folks. All of those states are up for grabs. I don't care what anybody says, I think those are gonna be tight. They're going to be tight, okay? Don't let anybody kid you, they're going to be tight. I mean, as, as much as you'd like to think that the country looks at our situation and says, Joe Biden is corrupt, he is incompetent, he is, he is cognitively diminished in a very significant way that causes us to question his ability to carry out his duties as president of the United States. He has wrecked the economy, he has wrecked our border, uh, he has, frankly, in, in many ways, contributed to the decline of our culture by supporting all this sexual perversion and garbage that goes on in the country. Uh, he's become the champion of, of sexual deviancy. 
course, shouldn't surprise us, given the fact that he loves, you know, these, these apparent weird touching of these young girls. And I mean, the, the guy's just, as far as I'm concerned, he's, he's demonic. Yeah, Joe Biden is demonic. That whole family, as far as I'm concerned, there may be individuals who are okay, but the, the, who I, I don't know. But the family culture of the Biden family is one of corruption. Uh, of course, the whole Democrat Party is corrupt. And in fact, in Exodus Now, the sequel, I go into that in great detail. That's why it takes 10 minutes, because I want people to understand what the Democrat Party, what today's Democrat Party is. And I'll tell you, if you listen, watch that video and listen to what I have to say and walk away from that as a Christian, and you can still vote for Democrats. I don't care what the color of your skin is. You can still vote for Democrats. Your wood is wet. Something's wrong. You better check your salvation monitor. You better check your, your Jesus connection because something is wrong. So check out the video. Don't do it right now because uh, do, it, do it as soon as this program is over. Go check it out. Please take 10 minutes of your time to do that and then share it with everyone you can. Okay, with everyone you can. All right, that's number one. Uh, number two. Stan Awards dinner is coming up on June the 11th at Cornerstone Chapel. Pastor Gary Hamrick and the wonderful congregation at Cornerstone Chapel has agreed to allow us to host, uh, to allow us to hold the event there. And we're going to have a wonderful time. So, uh, and by the way, let me just tell you, I'm going to make sure I don't leave anybody out here. Uh, every year we do, and we haven't been doing this, we haven't done this every year, uh, but in the years we've done it, this is our fourth coming up, our fourth one. We'll be celebrating 15 years, 15 years of Stan's existence. And I'll tell you who are, who the people are who have agreed to be honorees. And then there's some others that haven't yet, that haven't yet. We want to give them the awards, but of course they got to be there to receive it and they've got to accept it and so forth. Uh, but we're, we're going to be honoring Gary Hamrick because Gary Hamrick is a warrior. I mean, he really is a warrior. Well, you know, I always say anybody who's willing to associate with me, that tells you all you need to know. Because, <laughs> you know, because the people who are not, they shy away from me, even though they claim to be Christians, Bible believing Christians, they tiptoe around me because they just don't want the the opprobrium, the, the accusations, just like what they did to, to, to Lieutenant Governor Winston Sears when she made that gaffe and called this guy who thinks he's a woman, sir, and they just went ballistic. The first thing they started doing was associating her with me because I'd endorsed her. He, he, Bishop E.W. Jackson endorsed her, and he's homophobic and transphobic, and uh, you know, and on, 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 anyway. So, but Gary Hambrick... Sandy Rios. Sandy Rios has been a warrior for righteousness for decades. She, she doesn't look old enough to have been doing this as long as she's been doing it. Uh, she's just a warrior for God. So she is another one of our honorees. Um, Johnny Hunter. Now, that name may not ring a bell for some of you. For some of you, it will. But Johnny Hunter, as far as I am concerned, is the premier leader on life in the black community. He has been a champion for life, for all, uh, for all people, of course, but particularly in the forefront of trying to help the black community understand that the life issue is critical. You don't get that right. You can't get anything else right. And he's been out there on the front lines, I think, to, to, to often very little recognition. And so we're going to recognize him. We give out the George Washington Award for taking a stand to these great warriors. Now, there's some other people that I'm talking to, and I won't put their names out there because it's really not fair to them or to you, um, that we are hoping and expecting will be there. Uh, but we have not yet uh, confirmed that. So I won't, I won't get into that. But it's going to be a tremendous event. It's going to be a tremendous event. Uh, I don't think we've got anything posted yet uh, on ticket purchases or sponsorships, but we will have that done this week uh, because obviously time is going to fly. This is March. That's happening in June. Uh, that's only three months away. That's only that's less than three months away now. Um, 
Yeah, it's less than three months away. So, um, what about uh, I would guess about eleven weeks or so, right? No, no more like about. Well, I say yeah, twelve. Yeah, about eleven weeks. About eleven weeks. That's it. About eleven weeks. So, we got to get to cracking, right? We've got to get to cracking. So, so folks. Uh, please part, put that on your calendar, June the 11th at Cornerstone Chapel in Leesburg, Virginia. And there'll be information on the website here shortly to uh, allow you to purchase tickets, um, to be a sponsor and, and all of that. So please have that in mind because that's extremely, extremely important to us. Okay, let me see. What else have I got before I get to some of these issues? Oh, it's Tuesday. I hope you had a nice weekend, by the way. And there's always a lot of stuff to try to cover. Um, I want you to know that we are starting something called the Stand Network of Churches. The Stand Network. Forgive me. The Stand Fellowship. It's not going to be that word. Stand Fellowship of Churches. Well, we're ask, asking churches to join with us uh, as part of a fellowship of like spirited churches that are committed to the Judeo-Christian principles and values of our country, that are patriotic and determined to see America be a nation, remain a nation, whose God is the Lord, and one nation under God, all of those good things, so that we're not standing alone, but we're standing with a group of, of, of other churches. And by the way, this is a network of churches and ministries, so somebody's got a ministry and they want to be part of this, they're, they're going to be welcome to be part of it as well. The Stand Fellowship, really, it's the Stand Fellowship of Churches and Ministries. So I would just encourage you to, if you are, if you have a ministry, you're a pastor of a church, join with us. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure, let me just double check. You all realize I can't do all this stuff on my own and, and other people have to, to do it. I have to have help or, or it, the whole thing would just, it would, I, I, it would, it would collapse or I would collapse under the weight of it all. Um, let's see. Get involved. Uh, I want to see where this is. Local chapters. Um, okay, it's got stand local chapters. You know what? I don't see anything on here with regard to the stand network of churches. I thought, oh, wait a minute. Let me see here. Uh, you take a stand. Stand with law enforcement. Let me take a stand. Fellowship. Here we go. Fellowship of churches. Stand fellowship of churches membership application. So membership application is on the website. You would find that under stand projects. Come on here. Website. Act right. Okay. Yeah, you find that under hmm. Oh no, yeah, you start find that under projects. Projects. And just click on Fellowship of Churches. And it'll give you the application to apply. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that that application indicates whether you're a pastor or ministry leader, uh, et cetera, et cetera, church name, website, address, uh, and so forth. So check that out because we are expanding. We've got, a, I think it's about a dozen churches that are part of an informal fellowship, but we are formalizing that fellowship and expanding it so that we have a lot more churches involved in it by the end of the year okay and then we go on from there um, I gotta make a couple corrections to that but this is all brand new so we're we're working out the kinks as always okay so so got that out of the way let's see one other thing and that is this coming Thursday 5 30 p.m. Eastern time I will become a permanent host on Truth and Liberty for Andrew Walmack Ministries. Every Thursday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, I will be hosting Truth and Liberty with Andrew Walmack Ministries. 
Truth and Liberty with Andrew Womack Ministries. So, so folks, uh, tune in. You can get that on gospeltruth.tv, gospeltruth.tv. And I think there's other venues where you can get it too. And I, I'll get more adept at making sure that you know exactly where you can watch it. But that's one place you can watch it. Uh, you can probably get it on your YouTube channel. By the way, that's true for me too. If you go to your, on your television, if you've got a smart TV, which most people do today, you go to your YouTube icon, your YouTube app, click on that, put in E.W. Jackson, you'll come to my YouTube channel, and you'll get speeches that literally, folks, go back, I think, more than 15 years. Uh, the speech that I gave at the convention when I won the nomination for lieutenant governor is there and all kinds of stuff that I've done are all there on, on the E.W. E. Jackson YouTube channel. So please make sure you check that out, okay? Because that's a place where you can get all of my stuff and there's really no other place where that's true. I wish there were because you never know with YouTube. <coughs> but yeah, you would certainly get it there. So Truth and Liberty on gospeltruth.tv. That's where it's going to be broadcast from. And then there are other places. There's some cable networks where it's going to be on. That's going to continue to expand, by the way, because, as you know, Andrew Womack Ministries is creating their own cable network television channel that's coming in the fall. So they'll be, it, it will be on DirecTV and, and uh, um, Spectrum. And uh, does Verizon have... Whoever, whoever's got cable networks, wherever they are, whatever you're watching right now, however you watch, if you watch cable TV or internet television, and most of you probably cut the cord. I know I have. My family has. It's a lot cheaper to just go straight internet, which is what we've done. We don't have cable anymore. Um, but however you watch, it will be available to you. Okay? That's Truth and Liberty starting this coming Thursday. 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, you can see it every day, but I'm, I will only be hosting the Thursday program, and there are different hosts for other days, as you probably saw last week. Janet Porter is the host for one day. Janet Porter's Friday, as a matter of fact, and I'm trying to think. Who, oh, Andrew Womack is the host one day. Uh, Richard Harris is the host one day. And, uh, and oh, and there you know what? I, I know them all. So Alex McFarlane, there's, there's the five. Andrew Womack, Richard Harris, Alex McFarlane, E.W. Jackson, and Janet Porter. Those are the five hosts for Truth and Liberty. I am honored to be part of that lineup. Okay, all right. I think that that takes care of all the business. And that, that took quite a bit of time to get all, oh, my goodness gracious, that took a lot of time to get all of that out of the way. I'll have to go through that again tomorrow, by the way. But Exodus Now, folks. Exodus Now, the sequel is out. Okay. All right. Let's let's get to a couple of, of important issues here. Uh, first of all, the election, there's an election today <clears throat> in a number of states. The primary is already over, uh, but there are some local elections that do matter to people. I would just encourage all of you, get out and vote and vote for the most conservative candidate you can. And if there's no pro-life candidate, pro-family candidate in the race, write in the name of Jesus or write in your own name or do something. But get out there and let your, your convictions be known, okay? Uh, and if you've got a candidate who is pro-life, pro-family, but maybe is not perfect, do the best you can with that candidate and try to work with them, try to help them, try to encourage them, try to, to hold their feet to the fire when you feel like they're going off the reservation. Um, they're, they're going to be a whole lot better than a flaming leftist who is interested in destroying the country through destroying our culture and undermining our constitution, undermining our Judeo-Christian values and principles. You're going to be a lot better off with a candidate who at least adheres to and honors God, the constitution, family, Judeo-Christian morality. Uh, even if that candidate is far from perfect, you're going to be a lot better off with a candidate who at least begins with that foundation than a candidate who is so completely off the reservation that you, they might as well be an alien from outer space. So, but get out there and vote, okay? Um, I didn't have the list of places because I haven't spent a lot of time uh, talking about the election because as I've told you, 
it's over already. The primary is over. The primary is over. Let's see if I could um, see where, okay, here we go. Ballotpedia will tell us, wow, today? Yeah, March 19th. Oh, we got a bunch of elections happening today. Wow. Today's March 19th. Yeah. So it, it's a long list. Um, you know what? I'm not going to bother to read it. Um, Florida is important. Arizona is important. Um, uh, Kentucky, I guess. Ohio, definitely. Uh, so you got a number of elections taking place today. Just get out there and vote, okay? Vote for the most conservative candidate you can. And by the way, I don't mind saying, this is not always the case. <clears throat> if Donald Trump has elected a candidate, I mean, has nominated, no, 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 endorsed a candidate, that is prima facie, prima facie proof <clears throat> that that candidate is probably conservative, but it's not conclusive. As Donald Trump has not always endorsed the most conservative candidate. So you evaluate that for yourself. Don't just follow whatever he, and of course the people of our country haven't done that anyway, even though the mainstream media accuses us, accuses us of doing that. But don't just go with whoever he dominates. You think through it on your own. Maybe it's the best person, maybe it's not. If it is, fine. If it's not, you vote your conscience, okay? You vote your conscience. Uh, I'm going to say more, uh, by the way, about Donald Trump. As you all know, we've got a project under the same Stand America PAC. Exodus Now is a separate project, but we've got Save America, Elect Donald Trump project, and you can tr contribute to that as well. So just, just to be clear, even though I give you these provisos, uh, I'm not sycophantic about this. I know all too well Donald Trump's flaws. I am 1,000% behind supporting Donald Trump as the next president of the United States. That does not mean I have some kind of, of, of glary-eyed belief that Donald Trump is perfect. Far from it. I know better. I know better than that. There's only one person who's ever walked the earth who has been. That's, that's Jesus. And Donald Trump doesn't even come close. Neither do I, neither do you. But who is best for our country at this moment in our history? I don't think there's any question about that. Between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, I don't think there's any question about that. None whatsoever. With all of his flaws, Joe Biden makes Donald Trump looks like, look like Jesus for purposes of our country's political needs right now. You understand that analogy, right? I mean, in terms of the political needs of our country right now, Joe Biden is so full of the devil that he makes Donald Trump look like a saint. I put it that way. I, 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 I'm always reluctant to make comparisons to Jesus because he is the I am that I am, and he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the the almighty God. He is God incarnate. So there's no one who compares to him, but, but maybe I'll say it that way. Joe Biden is so full of the devil that he makes Donald Trump look like a saint. So I, I think that that's, that it's a no brainer. It's not even, it's not even a close call. Okay. So get out there and vote. That's number one. Number two, <clears throat> I have said repeatedly to the consternation of many, not only is the Democrat Party the party of, 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 of racist ideation, that they, 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 they really do think that they own what they call, quote unquote, people of color or anybody they deem a victim class. They, they think they own you because they're your saviors. Bow down and worship them because after all, I mean, what would we do without them? I've said repeatedly that the Democrat Party is anti-Semitic. <clears throat> they try to cloak it because they need money from Jewish contributors, but they are, they are, they are anti-Semitic. And by the way, 
I know this from personal experience that I had, that there are some Jews, and now it turns out that Chuck Schumer is one of them, who are self-hating. In fact, I've heard Jewish people talk about this, self-hating Jews. They hate themselves, they hate Judaism, they hate Israel. And Chuck Schumer is now criticizing uh, Bibi Netanyahu because Bibi Netanyahu is committed to destroying Hamas. And somehow he's the bad guy. Not these bloodthirsty terrorists who came across the border um, into Israel proper and just began to slay innocent human beings, non-combatant combatants, rape women, chop bodies up, <clears throat> chop up children. Not only did they, uh, I mean, they did all of that, and yet you've got Democrats, by the way, Chuck Schumer is Jewish, I understand. You've got Democrats who are saying somehow it is, it is Netanyahu is the bad guy because he set out to destroy Hamas. Of course he set out to destroy Hamas, folks. You know, sometimes the ignorance of people is exasperating. It really is. The purpose of war is to destroy your enemy's will and ability to fight. That is the purpose of war. That is what you are after, destroying your enemy's will and ability to fight. And knowing the fanaticism of Hamas, if they don't get in there and kill every Hamas person, uh, combatant they can find and destroy all of their infrastructure, shut down all that tunnel system that they have built, if they don't get in there and do that, it's only a matter of time before they face exactly the same thing all over again, except it'll probably be worse. What is Chuck Schumer whining about? I'll tell you what they're whining about. They don't like Israel. They don't like the Jewish people. And look, we can, we can talk about all kinds of political reasons for this and give you political analysis for it. I mean, and, and I can just sum that up by saying <clears throat> the left has gone full-blown Marxist and full-blown racist. They see Jews as white people. They see Palestinians as people of color, and they believe that Jews are white racists and supremacists trying to oppress these people of color. I mean, that's part of the analysis. Let there be no mistake about that. That's the way they see the world. They see the world through a racial worldview. It's Marxism with a racial patina over it so that the masses are not the lower classes, lower income, uh, poor people, although they're included. The masses are all the people of color around the world and the bourgeoisie, the capitalists, the oppressors, the exploiters, the imperialists are all white people. And they class Jews in Israel as the white people who are the oppressors, who are evil, who are racist, who are, you name it. I mean, these people are just, their worldview is so sick and warped that if we don't get control of it in, in our country, it can only lead to one thing, cataclysm. That's where it takes you. Frankly, it takes you to war. Hamas started this because that's the way they view Israel. They view Israel as the oppressor, as the enemy, as the supremacists, as the, the thieves, the robbers, the murderers who've come in there and taken what they claim belongs to them. There's a problem with that little uh, approach, which, and that is God gave Israel the land. God gave it to them, period. So, but that's, the, that's kind of the political analysis. But the spiritual analysis is this. The people who are full of the devil hate anything associated with God even when they don't know why. I hope you got that. Because we as Christians have got to always understand that spiritual underpinning the people who are 
haters of God hate anything associated with God. And they would never say, I'm a hater of God, but they hate God's morality. They hate God's truth. They hate God's people who adhere to that morality and adhere to that truth, or at least espouse it and say, this is the standard for mankind because God says so. Even if I don't fully meet it, the standard doesn't change. I don't throw out the standard because I fall short. The standard remains the same. God says, I am the same. I, cha- I am God. I am the same. I change not. Hebrews 13 says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. <clears throat> and they don't like that because they want to do their thing. They want to live their way. And God is in the way. As Satan as hell from the time he rebelled in heaven, he still has the same attitude. Bring God down so I can exalt myself and exalt all that is sick, disgusting, degenerate, depraved, perverse, murderous, everything vile, everything filthy, everything nasty, everything everything that seeks to, to destroy That's what he wants. You got Chuck Schumer and a a bunch of self-hating Jews and all these leftists. Really, they, they are chomping at the bit to go after Israel. And the only thing that restrains them is the Jewish people still stupid enough to give them money. Yeah, I said it because that's the truth. Stupid enough to give their enemies money because these people are their enemies. That's one thing. Here's a couple of stories that have not made any prominent news, but they should. A woman came on uh, and did a video that, that is going viral, at least it's making the rounds, because she was at Planet Fitness. <clears throat> a girl was, was kind of uh, um, cowering in a corner with a towel around her. Uh, this woman claimed this girl's about 12 years old, although she didn't know her, she couldn't be sure, but she looked like she was a minor. And she's cowering because there's a man in the girl's locker room in full naked exposure. And this poor child is there wondering, why is this guy here? And he's in there naked. And he's shaving or whatever he's doing. And the woman says, the woman, the adult woman seeing the child said, what are you doing here? And the guys shaving says, I have a right to be here because I told them that I'm claiming to be a woman. This is the insanity to which we've, we've now exposed ourselves. Forgive the pun. So the woman complains to Planet Fitness and says, you got a guy in the girl's locker room and there's a young girl in there who doesn't know what to do. She's wrapped up in a corner thinking, what, what can she do? Cause this guy planet fitness told her, since you do not adhere to the values of planet fitness, we are canceling your membership. They kicked the woman out. The guy gets to stay in the locker room with the girl. But the woman who raised the issue gets kicked out of Planet Fitness. They ought to call it Planet Unfitness. Because these people have lost their minds. By the way, this brings me back to REACH, R-E-A-C-H, the revolt to end anti-Christian hatred. Because folks, this stuff is primarily directed at Christians because while not exclusively, primarily Christians who hold a Judeo-Christian worldview and really believe that no girl should be forced to be in a locker room where some buck naked man displays his genitalia claiming that he's a woman. Now, come on. But if you reject God's morality, if you reject what Jesus said in the beginning, God made them male and female. If you reject that, then anything goes. 
And you know, the end of chapter uh, of uh, chapter one of Romans says, says, oh, I got to go, says um, not only do they do these things, but they approve. And that word approve means they celebrate those who do them. So in other words, you have to, in order to celebrate perversion, you have to punish the people who are against it. And who are the primary oppo opponents? Christians. Say, so wait a minute, that, that's, it's against God's law. It's against common sense. I'm not standing for it. Oh, you, you're one of those, you're one of those Bible believing idiots. Well, we, we're going to get rid of you. We're going to fire you from your job. We're going to kick you out of Planet Fitness. We're going to get your business closed down. We're going to stop you from being able to earn a living. That's exactly what's happening, folks. So go to our website and sign up for REACH as well. Make a contribution to the effort. We got, we got a whole bunch of different things that we're doing, folks. Uh, and believe me, we're stretched to the limit with the bandwidth to, to, do, to do it. But we believe in God for the resources to hire more people to help us run every one of these projects and, 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 and see to it that they are, they are running at full speed. Uh, was there anything else I was going to mention well, yeah, one other thing, and then I'm gone. This, this effort to bring Donald Trump down is illegal, it's unconstitutional, and it's demonic. And this woman uh, in New York, this attorney general in New York, Letitia James, whatever her name is, who's trying to, to attach Donald Trump's assets because apparently he doesn't have the cash to put up a $454 million bond. This woman is an abomination. And I hope that an appeals court is going to rein her in. Because what they're really trying to do is destroy Donald Trump's Trump. Because he cannot become president of the United States again. They're trying to do it at the back end. They can't do it through the voters. So they're going to try to do it using the criminal justice system and the civil uh, justice system, uh, the legal system in order to punish him like with some third world banana republic. It's sad. It's a sad thing to witness. And they're proud of it. And they ought to be ashamed of themselves. So let's be praying for Donald Trump and praying for this situation that all these people who are so committed to destroying him will end up destroying themselves instead. They'll, they'll end up reaping exactly what they've sown. They've sown the wind. They're going to reap the whirlwind. Listen, God bless each and every one of you. Got to go. Stand up. Step up. Speak up. Refuse to back up. Because we cannot be defeated if we will not quit. Because we are on God's side.